Five axis machining paired with our Rotovice has brought an incredible amount of productivity gains into our company. Now, I was about to buy another Haas UMC 500 until I got a phone call from a customer with a question that prompted me to save over $120,000 on bringing in more five axis equipment into our shop. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. So behind me is a Haas VF4SS, and on the table is a TRT-210. Now the TRT-210 is a multi-axis rotor unit. We've mated these two together so that we get a five-axis machine at the cost of just the TRT itself. Now, of course, the catch is that I already owned the VF4SS but I bought the TRT-210 at a significant add-on discount when I purchased another Haas mill. That's actually a VM3. Like and subscribe, hit that notification bell because we have that delivery video coming very soon, if not next. So we get a TRT-210 at a discount. We don't install it on the machine that it was ordered with. We install it in this existing, it's actually a 2017 model year VF4SS and then just add additional drives. Now, once you have this set up, you think, oh, this is really easy. You just bolt it on and go. It's actually not that easy. And in this video, we're gonna get a little closer look and I'm gonna show you exactly the hurdles that we had to overcome so you don't make the same mistake. Now, in some of my previous videos, I've covered how pairing up a row device with a four axis indicator will allow you to get a 12X productivity boost. Remember, it's access to three faces times four parts, 12X, but pairing it up with a five axis solution like this is a 16X productivity boost because now you're hitting four faces of the part times four parts, 16X productivity boost. That's why our row devices are just so darn popular, we can barely keep them in stock. I really feel like this setup is the, as I've said in other videos, it's the bar fed lathe version of productivity where you just set it up and it runs and almost finished parts comes out where you're almost printing money without going to jail. So it's true that the TRT 210 and also smaller little brother, the TRT 160 are bolt on additions. There's a bolt back here that bolts into the center T slot as well as two outboard um, kind of outrigger things here. And there is, you can't really see it, but there's another bolt in there. So four points of location for this unit. Now what's different about this and a UMC 500 is the direction of these axes. If you have something spinning on the X axis, that is known as the A. If something spins on the Y axis, that's a B. And if something spins on the Z axis, that's a C. Now, like I said earlier, this is a true A axis. In the UMC 500, it's a B and a C. For some reason, this is an A, which is correct, but this is known as the B axis. That's one of the hurdles that we have to keep in mind when we're programming this in our CAD CAM system, Fusion 360, I've mentioned that before. We just have to make sure we're using the right post processor um, setup so that we are not outputting B, which is normally like this, we're outputting A, and we're not outputting C, which this is actually the C axis, but is known as a B axis in the control. So that's the first hurdle. The next thing is bolting this all the way off the edge of travel makes me a little bit nervous. In fact, we bolted it all the way to the right hand side of the table to maximize the left hand side of the table. And when this uh, table is jogged back into the back right corner, things get really tight. So what we did there is we actually limited the travel of this unit. So it, it's, it's short about an inch and a half, both in the X and the Y, because I don't want to pinch cables. I don't want anything caught back there. When it's doing our warm up program, we usually cycle a table from uh, front left to back right. We changed all that stuff. 
That's user travel limits. That's easily done in the Haas control. So what we've done here is we've aligned it, we've indicated it, and the tricky part about this is it's a different alignment than the UMC 500. Now, let me show you what we do to find the center of rotation on this. The first thing we do is we're going to run an indicator across the top of the platter to find the true A0. Once we have that, we rotate the platter positive 90 and negative 90. And at each position, we touch off and find the center of that platter position. Go to the opposite side, find the center of that platter position, do the math, the halfway point, that is the center of rotation for Y. Now, once we know that distance, that means when we rotate it back down, again, half of that distance is the Z center of rotation when we probe the top of it and that distance. I think in this case, it was about 611 thousandths. And then to find the X center of rotation, that's really easy. We just probed the center of the bore and that center will give us the X center of rotation. Then what we do after that is we standardize that location. We saved it to G154 P19. That was a high number unused offset. And we then program everything off of that center of rotation in CAM. Now what's different about this compared to the UMC 500 is the UMC 500 also you want to find the center of rotation but it's done through software known as MRZP, uh, Machine Rotary Zero Point, in which you have a basically a, a probe or some, some type of device sphere mounted to the table and the machine goes through a pre-programmed set of calibration cycles to find the center of location. Now, remember that call I got from a customer? Customer called and said, hey, I've been watching your videos. I own a row device. I want to buy another row device, but I'm thinking of mating it to a Haas TRT-210. Do you know anything about this? Can you give me any feedback? Can you help me with this process? I had literally never thought about these TRT units, and I said, well, let me call you back. Now, as luck, or almost dumb luck would have it, our bolt pattern for the flange was identical to the bolt pattern in the faceplate of the default TRT-210 platter. Now you can order these with the zero point system, you can order them with a T-slot table, they just build up, they add complexity. Going with the standard um, no additional cost, that's all in hyphens, no additional cost platter, um, just made it a really simple setup. The bore is two inches. When the customer would purchase our row device, you just specify a two inch guide pin at checkout. It mates down six bolts all the way around and it is like a bolt and go solution. So are there any gotchas in this whole setup? Well, I would say yes. From a mechanical standpoint, you do not want to have your row device directly under the spindle if you're machining in this vertical configuration and then do a tool change. The solution to this is in the Haas control. You can specify a known tool change location. So wherever it needs to change a tool, you can tell it, hey, I always want to be at X maybe like 10 so that it moves the table this way so it's out of the way. Also, you can command it to always change tools at a90, so this row device lays flat, it doesn't protrude as much, and then you don't need to move the table at all. Now on the financial side of it, if you have a three axis machine, each three axis drive requires its own uh, servo amplifier. When you add an additional axis to run maybe a fourth axis, like a, like a HRT 160, 210, that type of thing, the servo amp is maybe, I don't know, $1,500 upfront pricing on the Haas website if you want to look at that. But if you add a second or a five axis uh, servo amp, that's where the price is not an additional or incremental $1,500. It is thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm not sure why this is the case. I can tell you that if you're adding servos, it does add complexity. 
It also adds more processing power, which is already built into the Haas control. And I totally understand and su support the business model that to develop five axis technology, there is a cost to that. So the physical cost of adding a fifth drive is not there. It's the development cost that gives you, the customer, the ability to add five axis capabilities to your machine while paying for the engineering research and development that allows you to do that. So I've heard some people complain that that fifth axis drive is a lot more expensive, but you're not necessarily paying for the drive itself. You're paying for every step in front of it that allows you to maximize your production with five axis machining. So with that being said, let's take a look at some cool machining footage. So if anything piqued your interest in this video, I'll add links in the video description below for the Rotovice and the TRT210. So if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing so we can give you more of these tips to innovate your production.